sure. All right, thank you.
Yeah, as long as you don't go in front of the table, you're good. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Thank you. I'm only put myself here just for a sec. No, I appreciate it. They still walk in school up and sprint. I'm just, I'm going to stand in here while they do that, and then as soon as they're clear, I'll move out there. Thank you. That's okay. He doesn't. They're walking up and splitting up this table. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I assume y'all would sit as close to this because someone can't. Do you want to try to pull it up and just see if you can hear anything? I don't know. Like, I'm getting a level, but like on the YouTube side, it's like, what? Gotcha. Where's your input? I mean, I just have to do that. Like, I don't know what else, you know, there's like nothing else. We could maybe point him towards me a little bit.
So it's it's on there. You know, obviously nothing nothing's happened. Marco Polo. I just showed you. It's just me and the All right, cool. I'm glad it's not the second half of our thing, too. I didn't want to put it in the auditorium. I didn't want to hear about the people that ran back and forth and told us we were like lagging by like 10 to 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think we're behind. I think we're really bad for you. 10, which is like pretty I much have it on the, I have it on the lowest, like the lowest stream. Yeah, yeah. there's like three options on YouTube. It's uh, like, um, like a media, which is not, but and then like minimal, and then it's slow, and it's apparently for so people can like leave comments in the live chat or something. Okay. I was, like, I was trying to like read about it, and I was like, I could definitely see one where it's like I'm gonna live, basically live feed it.
Thank <laughs> you. 
celebrate the class of 2022. Someone told me today that we have not had to move graduation inside for 25 years. So that trend continues. At this time, I would like to call Jerry Lee and Moira McGovern forward to give the class greeting. and welcome to the graduation ceremony for the class of 2022. It is our profound honor to congratulate our classmates on being here today. I would also like to thank our teachers, administrators, family, and friends who are here today because without you, we probably wouldn't be standing here. 
As a class, we have been through so much together, and it is strange to be standing here saying our final official goodbye before we explore what's next. Whether that be in another country or in Guildford, college, work, trade, or a gap year, we are such a unique class. We are smart, creative, resilient, athletic, strong, change makers, innovators, activists, and so much more. And that is why we are why we are bound to make an impact on the world around, around us. We are fortunate to have grown up in Guildford. We are fortunate to have received the quality education only a blue ribbon school can provide. And most importantly, we are fortunate to be standing here on this stage for this milestone. We made it through a time of national and global unrest, polarization, and confusion, all while going through a global pandemic. We struggled, cried, and zoomed together. More importantly, we cheered, smiled, and laughed alongside one another. It has not been an easy four years, but we are here now. We made it through. My message to you today is to take that luck, persistence, and intelligence along with all the other lessons we have learned over the past 13 years and run with it. Go into the world that now awaits us and make a change. Create a better tomorrow. As lucky as we may be, we have every right to be proud of ourselves. In four years of high school, we have had a journey like none other, cutting constantly through a pandemic to create as normal an experience as possible. There were moments where we felt like regular high schoolers, but there were also tough moments that could not feel more distant from our expectations. Yet through it all, we the class of 2022 made it together. So look around yourselves and marvel. Marvel at the brilliant individuality, at the awe-inspiring story each of your peers have to tell, at the strength of this community, and most of all, at the fortune we have all had in spending this time together. Since middle school, we have called ourselves the class of 2022, and it is today that we must say goodbye. It is okay to be sad, but we have a choice. Rather than reminisce in gloom, let us do so in optimism. Let us find strength in the difficulties we have overcome, joy in the moments we share, and inspiration in what the future holds. Wherever we go from here, a piece of this class will be forever in our hearts. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you, Jerry and Moira. Dr. Bellis Tracy, members of the Board of Education, Dr. Freeman, First Selectman Hoey, faculty, staff, and parents, thank you for being here today to honor the achievement of our graduates. Whether you're here with us in person or watching from home, your consistent support of our seniors over the course of their 13 years of high school has brought them to this important rite of passage this evening. There are many people who work tirelessly behind the scenes to make this happen today. It could not have come together smoothly without our custodial staff, Mr. Gum and the Wind Ensemble, Ms. Allen and GHS Voices, Mr. Ripa and our Technology Department, the Guilford Police Department, our administrative team, Ms. Sullivan, the Graduation Coordinator, and most importantly, Mr. Schneider, and Mr. Fodi, our senior class advisors. Thank you all for your collaboration and hard work. And now to the graduating class of 2022, the rest of my comments are for you. I'd like to begin with a brief, I promise you brief, anecdote that gets at the heart of what makes you unique as a graduating class, in my mind anyway. This past winter, I went to my very first high school wrestling competition, and I confess that I have little to no knowledge of the intricacies of wrestling. But the experience left me with an indelible impression that I don't think I'll forget anytime soon. It occurred to me during one of the matches that the moves the wrestlers make in the ring under those giant spotlights are a lot like life. Sometimes you have it all pinned down and you emerge victorious. Other times, life has you pinned, your face pressed mercilessly to the floor, your spine twisted in the most unnatural position as you continue to struggle to release yourself from the pressure. But as I stand before you now, I recognize that this is a gross oversimplification. 
And here's how all of you, each one of you, is wiser than I. As a class, you've shown repeatedly in four years that you don't get caught up in this kind of binary thinking. You don't get stuck on wins and losses. Life is much more nuanced and interesting than that, and you've already figured that out. You've heard a lot of presentations in the last couple of years, two and a half years, that talk about all of the things that you've lost. But today, let's acknowledge what you've gained. Your class officers and their letter to you in the yearbook capture your spirit and drive by saying, you improvise, you adapt, you overcome. I would make one small suggested change to their astute observation. As you move into life after high school, improvise, adapt, and learn no matter where life takes you next, be it college or university, the military, job training, a trade, an apprenticeship, the workforce, a gap year, travel, no matter where your path leads. Let go of the illusion that you are in competition with other people. In actuality, you are only in competition with one person, yourself. In, the, in his final presentation for Voyages and Vessels, one of your classmates, Joe Ehrlich, said it this way. It's not the mistakes you make, it's how you compensate for them. He could not have said it any better. So here's my wish for you, class of 22. I couldn't resist the rhyme, sorry guys. <laughs> continue to resist the trap of binary thinking. Improvise, adapt, and continue to learn. And above all, be well. At this time, please welcome your valedictorian, valedictorian Lorelai King, to the podium. I know a lot of people start their speeches by saying, you may not know who I am, but in my case, that actually may be true. So hi, you may not know who I am. My name is Lorelai King, and I am the valedictorian of the class of 2022. If you're one of those who does not know me, it's probably because I moved here about two years ago, right before my junior year, from the town of North Haven. It's not very far, you've probably been there. It's the one with the good movie theater with the really nice reclining seats. That's all it's really known for. <laughs> I didn't know it at the time, but moving here would bring me to a community that would really push me and undoubtedly shape me into the person that I am today. A community that would welcome me with open arms, something that is immensely meaningful to me. If I had known that, maybe I wouldn't have been so mad at my parents for doing it to me. I was introduced to Guilford by way of a summer cross-country captain's practice. It was supposed to be a fun practice held at one of the captain's beach houses, but we started with a half-mile warm-up, which I found a little excessive, and then I received my work workout, which was kindly modified since it was my first practice, from eight miles down to, quote, just five. We are all at the end of our own ruling five-mile runs here today, and I would like to say, first and foremost, congratulations. You have made it. You can take a deep breath and relish in the fact that you will never again take the SAT or the PSAT, which may be even worse. You will never again sit in a very hot, packed gym or on very cold bleachers on the day before a holiday vacation and watch your principal dressed up as a bear fight a suit and a tiger costume. <laughs> All jokes aside, I feel like these days it's expected that you graduate high school, but that does not mean that it is not difficult and that does not undermine how proud you, proud you should be to have made it this far. You are all part of an incredible class full of academic, athletic, artistic, musical, and all around talent. You have earned this. Celebrate yourselves, and while you do that, acknowledge those who have helped you to get to this point. On behalf of the class, I would like to thank our principal, Ms. Cha, the assistant and principal assigned to our class, Mr. Vino, and the entire administration, the teachers, and the staff that have supported us through this journey. I personally like to thank my parents and my family for all of their support, but also to extend that thanks to all of the parents and families sitting here today who made an impact on their child's life and education. You are valued. And finally, thank you to a few other people who would kill me if they were not mentioned, 
namely my IB cohort, my friends, my girlfriend, and the cross-country indoor track and lacrosse teams. You have been my network of support, and I'm eternally grateful for the part that you had in welcoming me to this town. I could not have done it without you. And now I come to the truly sappy part of my speech. I had a conversation with a friend recently after our exams were over, and she told me now that school was ending, truly ending, she felt like she had no purpose. Some of you may understand this unsettling feeling of being done, and not the typical feeling of being out for the summer, but truly done. There are no summer reading books, no math packets, and no essays. To some of you, that's fantastic news, and to some, it's a completely terrifying idea. I think whichever category you fall into, almost all of us can understand the sort of trepidation surrounding what is to come. No matter if you're going off to college, into the workforce, the military, trade school, or taking a gap year, whatever you're doing, it was a choice that you made. This is one of the first really big choices that we get to make that contributes to the building of our future. Since kindergarten, we have gone to school because we had to be there. And whether you enjoyed it or not, you showed up, you did the things we were told to do, and ultimately that led to this, to you sitting right here, ready to receive your diploma. But once you leave this stage, you are entering a part of your life that belongs to you, a part that you chose. And I think this is part of what my friend found scary, because once we have a choice, there's always the danger that we will choose wrong. We as humans really like the idea of having a purpose, a reason for doing the things that we are doing. The choice that you made for your future likely had some higher purpose behind it. Going to college and majoring in something to eventually get a job in that field, going to trade school to get the skills to enter the workforce in that trade. For me, part of the reason I'm going to college and majoring in biology is that I'm truly interested in medicine and I think that I want to be a doctor. But admittedly, part of it is because school is what I've always known and college has always seemed like the next step after high school. I've had the experience recently, and many of you probably can share in this experience, of people asking me what my plans are, what I'm going to do in the future, and how I'm going to contribute to our society. What I want to say is, it is okay not to know. Right now, we are allowed to not know. It is okay for now if your purpose is to just be a good friend, or to create art that you enjoy, or to learn because you want to, and because you are interested in it. Yes, we have big choices to make for our future, and yes, we are now adults and have more responsibility than ever on our shoulders, but we also get the freedom to explore, to experiment, to mess up, to figure out what we don't like and what we do. I feel like from the very start, we've been told that we are meant to do amazing things, and I'm sure that this graduating class will do just that. But I want to say that no matter what people are telling you, you do not have to save the world. And if you have the chance as we embark on this next chapter of our lives, try to find or continue to do the things that make you happy, the things that light a spark in you. We have graduated high school, and although I don't think it's about to get easier, at least what comes next is ours. We chose it. Today is a day to celebrate your accomplishments, to reflect on everything that made your high school experience what it was. Maybe it was the academics, but maybe it was the bonds you created on your sports teams, the music you made with your classmates, in your orchestra, band, or chorus, the plays you helped put on, the art that you created, or the service you've given to your community. Whatever you chose to do, you made an immeasurable impact on our school and our town, and I hope you enjoyed it at the same time. So today, reminisce on what high school has given you, what this community has given you, and tomorrow, take all of that and use it to look forward and to start on your next journey, whatever that may be. In a very cliche manner, I will leave you with a quote by Oprah Winfrey, who says it much better than I ever could. There is no greater gift you can give or receive than to honor your calling. It is why you were born and how you became most truly alive. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. I'd like to call the following class officers, officers to the stage to assist with the special presentation. Moira McGovern, Jerry Lee, Theodore Freeman, Connor DeBoda, Matthew Kotzbauer, and Mary Abigail Moore. <laughs> Please welcome co-vice presidents of the class of 2022 to the podium to make a special presentation. Nicholas Meeks and Luke Robbins. As co-vice presidents of the class of 2022, Luke and I are honored to have the opportunity to present our class sheet. Thanks to our extremely talented AP art and woodshop students, we have a shield that represents us all. 
We'd like to begin by recognizing these students who played a role in designing and creating the class shield. If you are comfortable doing so, please stand as we recognize and appreciate the work that you've done. Designing both the class shield and illustrating the class shield graduation pamphlet cover, Kathleen Marinas. Our other contributing artists were Lillian Vinsel, Jaden Violet, Alexandra Pagnito, Kayla Dona. Mars Johnson, Katya Maring, and Woodshop student AJ Rachi. As Guilford Grizzlies ourselves, when we see the grizzly bear holding out the world, we see all of the opportunities for us as we set out to continue our lives. As many of us depart from Guilford, we'll travel to different places, go on to different professions, and forge new relationships with different people. Yet, we will all be connected through this amazing school and everything we've learned in our years here. Represented by the plexiglass aspect of the shield, we're all pieces of a community that will continue to do great things long after we graduate. I now invite your salutatorian, Jared Lee, to the podium. He's going to yell! <laughs> High school is a scary, bewildering, magnificent time. In just four years, an eternity has flown by. And some 260 of us have matured from naive freshmen into adults stepping towards the real world. And we did not get here by ourselves. So on behalf of the class of 2022, I would first like to say thank you. Thank you to the teachers and administrators for providing us with a safe, enriching learning environment that has fostered our growth as young adults. Thank you to our coaches and advisors for pushing us nonstop to be the best that we can be. Thank you to our parents and families for supporting us through our highs and our lows, for being our personal chauffeurs and biggest fans. In particular, I would like to thank my mom and dad, my brother Jason, and all of my friends for making high school the experience that it has been. And finally, seniors, let's thank one another. For the last four years, or even more for some, this group before us has been a community. These are the people that we sat next to every day in class that we have formed close bonds with on sports teams, or musical ensembles, or extracurricular clubs. And at the very least, these are the people that we have spent six hours and 38 minutes in the same building with for 180 days a year. And I think we often fail to consciously appreciate this community, to appreciate how remarkable it is that our unique paths should share this intersection. So let's go back in time to the very beginning of our story. For me, the single most fascinating concept I've encountered in my learning is the Big Bang. Not so much because of the science involved, but because of how foreign that state of nothingness is and the intricacy that we are surrounded by today. For our Earth to form with all the necessary components of life, for humans to evolve, and for us, billions of years later, to be here at graduation is nothing short of a miracle. So much of a miracle, in fact, it feels as though there must be a reason for our existence. What is our purpose? Against this backdrop of eons and cosmos, with this lingering question we are far too young to begin to answer, our lives might feel small sometimes. And put into perspective, high school may not even seem like such a big deal. As childhood is now but an evanescent first chapter of our lives, it is perfectly normal to feel anxious about the uncertainty of the future. So it is now that we must remember. 
It is now that we must remember the countless outstanding music concerts and theater productions and sports titles. It is now that we must remember all of our individual and collective accomplishments. And most importantly, it is now that we must remember how to rise against adversity, how to inspire change in the community, and how to care for ourselves and those around us. Because the truth is, we have been through a lot. Of course, we should never take for granted the privilege of living in Guilford or the luxury of going to a high school as nice as our own. But neither should we discount the difficulties that we've battled along the way. When the world was shut down back in March of 2020, so were we. When the political spectrum continued to polarize, we were not exempt from its strain. We too have felt the worry for loved ones in a pandemic ridden world. We too were isolated from friends and went through high school during one of the most frustrating, loneliest possible times. But we are not here today to pity ourselves. Judy Wallace, the director of a local volunteering organization I'm a part of, called Pilgrim Fellowship, has a quote that she likes to share, one that I would like to pass along to you now. It reads, if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. So let our journey together through this suboptimal pass, let our difficult yet necessary conversations on topics like race and mental health, let our response to a challenging world be a testament, not to our misfortune, but to our strength and adaptability as individuals and as a class. Because after all, the world we are now about to enter is filled with issues far more severe than the ones we are likely to encounter here in Guilford. This world, where gun violence still runs rampant, as evidenced by the recent tragedy in Uvalde, where climate change is ever on the rise, where human rights are still often in question, this world needs young people like us now more than ever. So let us acknowledge the problems that plague society rather than hide from them. Rather than be afraid of the future, embrace it. And rather than worry about the fall, let us find solidarity in this final leap we share. As we leave the stage today, we venture towards new destinations with new people and new communities. As different as our high school experiences have already been, this is the point where our lives truly diverge. Whether that is college or trade, science or the arts, helping others or discovering individual passions, the possibilities are endless. Yet inevitably, we are reunited again by the question of purpose. It is a question that nobody can solve for us, a question that bears a unique answer for each individual. So while neither I nor anyone can tell you the meaning of life today, I do know this. Too often, we strive for perfection because society tells us we must. Too often, we strive for success as defined by others. But as I'm sure we can all attest, we feel most alive instead in the moments where we are surrounded by the pursuits and people that we love. So as we begin to explore this next chapter of our lives, act with love and passion, and the meaning will follow. To leave your mark is not to create some everlasting monument or legacy. To leave your mark is simply to use your life and do something you can be proud of with it. Thank you. Would the senior members of GHS Voices come forward to perform a musical selection at this time?
Thank you for that lovely performance. Dr. Freeman, I present to you the senior class of Guilford High School and certify that they have met the requirements for graduation prescribed by the State of Connecticut and the Guilford Board of Education. I would like to welcome you to the podium at this time. This is Chad, Guilford High School faculty and staff, Dr. Balistracy, members of the Board of Education, Mr. Hoey, town officers and officials, Guilford community and friends, proud parents and families, and very happy graduates, congratulations. <clears throat> Welcome to tonight's ceremony. Thank you for being here and congratulations to all of you on all that you have accomplished. I'm privileged to join with this community in recognizing these young people this evening. And Mrs. Chaff, I am proud to accept these candidates for graduation from Guilford High School, the graduating class of 2022. That's the official bit, but I still have the microphone. <laughs> I will be brief tonight. We have learned a lot through these last years, these several years of pandemic. One thing that I have learned is that people appreciate it when I'm brief. So again, I will be brief tonight. <laughs> I, think, I think you still see clouds behind our shoulders, but from where I am standing, there is nothing but absolute blue sky above all of you. And I think that it is absolutely fitting that the clouds have literally parted to allow these graduating seniors to do so here tonight in the heart of this community on this green. And I do have one really brief story and one bit of advice that I want to share with tonight's graduates. Many of you know that I have four sons of my own. Last summer on my birthday, Jonah, he's one of our twins, Jonah gave me a book and that book made a real impression on me. It was entitled Finding the Mother Tree, Discovering the Wisdom of the Forest by Suzanne Samard. 
Samard was writing about her time and her discoveries as a forester working for the Canadian government. And the message of the book boils down to this. And to be clear, this is the non-scientific version. If you want the scientific version of all of this, I encourage you to find the book. Here's the layman's version. Canadian companies make a lot of money selling pine. Pine is the cash crop of the timber industry, and that industry has spent a lot of time and invested a lot of money asking really smart people to figure out how best to raise pine trees. And at first, decades ago, the answer seemed really, really simple and intuitive. It was clear cutting. They would cut an entire forest, they would remove all other growth, and they would plant pine trees exclusively, only pine trees. All other growth of any kind was discouraged with herbicides and weeding. It seemed absolutely intuitive that under those conditions, the pines would thrive. There was no competition for resources. There were no other trees. There wasn't even any other vegetation competing for nutrients or for water or for sunlight. There were no challenges. There were no complexities. There was no biodiversity. This was a monoculture to produce a valuable and prized product. What Samard knew, however, and what she set out to prove was that that was not true. There were a lot who disbelieved her, but over decades, she continued to wonder why pines in unmanaged forests actually grew better than the ones in the clear cut managed fields. The ones in the managed fields were often smaller, they were more sickly, they grew slower and produced less wood over time. What she found was that in more diverse plantings, even in the unmanaged forest areas, trees don't so much compete, they cooperate. Different trees with different root systems do different jobs. Pines have actually pretty shallow roots. Other trees, however, have deep roots that reach deep down into the, work, into the earth. They bring water up, some of which leaches out into that top soil. It makes it easier for the pines, particularly the youngest pines, to drink. Pines have needles. Other trees collect resources through photosynthesis occurring in their broad, flat leaves. And they actually release some of those nutrients into the soil, nourishing the pine trees. What I find most interesting is that all of these trees' roots, as they intertwine beneath the surface, are actually connected by a fungal network. Trees are actually communicating with each other. They alert each other to pests, blight, infestation, and they protect not just themselves, but each other through this fungal network and this chemical communication. Diverse plantings of trees are actually smarter than the monocultures. Biodiversity is a good thing. Samard knew that. Farmers know that. Gardeners know that. Monocultures deplete the soil and damage the ecosystem in which they're established. Diverse plantings, on the other hand, enrich the soil. They sustain pollinators. They feed animals. And they generally make our world a better place while also producing a better target product. Graduates, as you leave here tonight, as you choose to either move on and away from Guilford or to deepen your own roots here in this community, I ask you to remember that. And as we celebrate you and congratulate you on all that you have done, I'm also going to ask you to do more. We need you to do more. It's a cliche for graduation speakers to say that our generation is leaving you a world that you will need to improve upon. But cliches are cliches for a reason. We are leaving you a world with much to be done, with work to be done. And so I ask you, when you plant your roots and establish, establish yourselves wherever that may be, remember that you will do better, you will thrive more, you will grow faster and stronger when you surround yourselves with trees that are not all like yourself. You will do more good in this world. You will bring more light and more light into this world when you, try, when you choose to surround yourselves not only with pines, but with aspens and firs and oaks and maples, with ash and apple and cherry, with nutmeg and elm. 
Surround yourselves with others who are not so much like yourselves. You will be stronger for it. You will thrive more for it. And you'll do more good in this world because of it. Congratulations on all that you have achieved here. We are proud of each and every one of you. And we wish you all the very, very best. Dr. Bonds Tracy. Good evening to the Guilford High School class of 2022, to parents, guardians, and families, First Selectman Hoey, and our town leadership, and members of our Guilford community. Welcome to Guilford High School graduation. First, on behalf of my colleagues on the Board of Education, I would like to publicly thank Dr. Freeman for his outstanding leadership of Guilford Public Schools. I would like to thank Ms. Chaff for her steady and expert leadership as principal of Guilford High School. And I would like to extend our heartfelt appreciation and gratitude to all our administration, our faculty, and our Guilford Public School staff for their daily and continuous commitment to excellence in education and to the well being of our students. <laughs> to the class of 2022, this moment in time is one of significant transition. You leave Guilford Public Schools, and many of you leave Guilford, where some of you have spent your entire lives and head for new communities, college, work, the military. As you prepared for this transition, I imagine you have been asked innumerable times the following questions. What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? What do you want to be? I fear that we have not asked the most important question, or certainly not asked it enough. Who? do you want to be? I suspect that many of you have spent the greater part of your high school years trying to figure out who you are, what you believe, what you value, but you haven't done so in a vacuum. There has been pressure to behave and look and dress certain ways to be part of a group, to be cool, to be accepted. In this time of rampant social media, there appears to be little relief from this 24 seven pressure. And the universe from which that pressure comes has expanded exponentially from your school, your town, your neighborhood, to anyone in the world with access to the internet. But who are you is not a question that can or should be answered by others. The upcoming transitions in your lives will bring opportunities to introduce yourself, to form new connections with others, to enter in a community on your own in a way that you may not have experienced before. And with these opportunities, I urge you to be the real you. The last two years of the COVID pandemic have underscored the criticality of human connection. The isolation and physical distancing we experienced significantly disrupted our human connections. The absence of these connections can have significant negative impacts on our physical and mental health. Brene Brown, well-known author and researcher of Courage, vulnerability, shame, and empathy at the University of Houston makes clear that the human connections we engage in will not sufficiently, sufficiently feed and sustain us. Indeed, they will lose a greater part of their value if who we bring to these interactions is not who we really are. The real you needs to show up. Not a static you, be open to change, new ideas, new people, 
new experiences. But do not take on a persona that does not fit you. Not only because there is only one you, and not only because the world needs what you have to offer, it indeed truly needs those things, but because it is simply not healthy to try being somebody else. Be you. Might it be scary? Yes. Might someone reject you? Yes. If so, move on. Engage with people who are open to who you are and accept you for you. And lastly, a most important request, be that person for others. Be open to differences. Give others room to be who they are and advocate for others when public support for them is needed. But I don't really need to tell you that. We have witnessed you do this many times over your years here in Guilford Public Schools. The world needs your advocacy, so I ask you to continue to provide it. So, on this night representing both accomplishment and new beginnings, I urge you to seize the upcoming opportunities born of new places and new people. Put the real you out there and be open to the many different people you encounter. We will and are rooting for you all the way. And now, Dr. Freeman, Principal Chap, and Guilford Public Schools faculty and staff, pursuant to the authority vested in the Board of Education by the Constitution and the General Statutes of the State of Connecticut, I am pleased to confirm that these students, having met all the requirement, requirements put before them, are indeed now graduates of Guilford High School. <laughs> Guilford High School has a lovely tradition in which the senior class selects two faculty members to read their names at graduation. The class of 2022 selected Mr. Louis Monaco. Yeah! and Mr. John Foley. <laughs> Gentlemen, please step forward to begin presenting the candidates for graduation. Tamsin King. Jerry Yu-Wei Lee. Laura Grace McGovern. <laughs> Nicholas Anthony Meeks. <laughs> Luke Jeffrey Robbins. <laughs> Connor Francis DeBoda.
Theodore Roman Freeman. Matthew David Kotzbell. Mary Abigail Moore. Colby Farron Cortese. Olivia Grace McDonald. Michael Gerard Palatiello. Justin Taylor Schifrin. Juan Miguel Salas Romer. Annika Luisa Accomando. Jasmine Acevedo. Alessa Page Albi. Kylie Madison Albert. Michael Robert Alia. Ariana Lucia Alvarez Pena. Colby Andrew Ambrosiak. Ryan Sayed Amr. <laughs> Nicholas Anthony Amter. <laughs> Maxwell Braddock Andrews. Owen, David, and Katavinich. <laughs> Julia Rose Antony. <laughs> Charlotte Livia Atherton. Russell Thomas Ballard. <laughs> Ryan John Barbetti. <laughs> Edward Francis Barlidge the Fourth. Leah Jillian Ben. <laughs> Olivia Margaret Leajai. Allison Grace Bickford. <laughs> Jaden Michael Biotti. <laughs> Justin Walter Bloomberg. <laughs> Zori Sinclair D. Ballard.
Thomas Ryan Booth. Kyle David Brainerd. Naya Mikhail Bretman. Calvin O'Brien Brooks. Natalie Kate Bryan. Cal Joseph Bucci. Jake Michael Burrell. Owen Foster Campaign. Olivia Catherine Campbell. Gianna Maria Castelvitro. Summer Jean Charbonneau. Alyssa B. Chen. Anna Olivia Chai. Sophia Marie CNL. Ethan Lane Clark. Ian Patrick Cochran. Madison Catherine Collinberg. Emma Christine Coover. Andrew Vincent Capova. Max Reginald Corbett. Morgan Samuel Corpion. Topanga Sky Corsa. David Aaron Prayer. Jack Robert Kramer. Emily Isolu Crossley. Paige Elizabeth Crowley. Let's go, Paige! Lauren May Kinney. Christopher Michael Cassano. Dominic Mishiniev Dadek. Madison Eliza Daggett. Tessa Lee Dalberg. <laughs> Hannah Yahong Dang. <laughs> J. 
Jocelyn Marie Del Franco. Victoria Danielle DeLuca. Mini Margaret DePetris. Nicholas Jude DeRosa Jr. Jessica Ann DeRusso. Liabella Marcelina Diaz. Kayla Ann Dona. Aiden Patrick Donahue. Annabelle Lynn Dorak. Dustin Francis Doyle. Joseph Logan Erlin. Rachel Elaine Ellison. Madison Rose Epke. Sean Peter Fanning. Taylor Ann Brace. Michael George Betterling. Brooke Charlize Felton. Charles Collier Fenelosa. Alexander James Ferguson. John Leo Fernandez. <laughs> Brenna O'Neill Thistle. <laughs> Juliana Lauren Fleischer. Sarah Renee Fournier. Matthew Christopher Fox. Haley Carol Fulton. Matthew Ryan Galligan. William Donald Jabal. Tucker Kimball Gitrost. Sophia Norma Gontos. Olivia Jordan Gill. Ryan Thomas LeBlanc Glass. Layla Aaron Godbout.
Jason Paul Galea. Christopher Joseph Galino. Zachary James Gray. Thomas Francis Xavier Gregory. Aaliyah Marie Gibbons. Yeah. Hannah Seregini Greif. Catherine Lauren Grenoble. Henry Springer Gunderson. Dylan Benjamin Gutierrez. Alicia Michelle Hagburn. Ryan Patrick Hallis. Jacob Alexander Halsema. Desper Shea Hawks. Brock Adam Hecklin. Finn McCabe Henry. Juliana Eleanor Herbin. Thatcher Zane Holland. <laughs> Isabella Ava Holmes. <laughs> Shannon Rose Hunt. Raika Mio Ishibi. Brooke Ashley Johnson. Kendra Michaela Johnson. Michelle Marianne Johnson. Audrey Michelle Kamen. Caroline Mar Kane. Amra Kende. Arian Karki. Ian Patrick Keating. Benjamin Mark Kellner. Yeah. 
Leanna Nicole Koff. Drew Thomas Cobell. Ali Nicole Cruzet. Christina Marie Lachance. Liam Tyler Ledwith. Augustus Greenleaf Kellogg. Sky Lent. <laughs> Bryn Lee Leslie. <laughs> Christina Gale Libby. <laughs> Amelia Catherine Lynn. Gavin Michael Litvin. Matthew Joseph Londa. Alexa Rose Lorello. Owen Nathaniel Lowry. Harrison David Lloyd. Hey! <laughs> Natalia Elizabeth Lucero. <laughs> Brady James Lynch. Andrew Christopher Malton. Sean Michael Mandel. Anna Celeste Mangino. Lily May Maraconda. <laughs> Kathleen Rose Marinas. <laughs> Joseph Robert Markowski. Isabel Rose Matthews. Aiden Douglas McBriarty. Emma Rosemary McCartan.
Eliza Capwell McCourt. Julia Ann McDonald. Thomas Nikita McLean. Olivia Emerson McMahon. Casey Ella Meeks. Emma Kate Meglin. Katia Sophia Merring. Krisha Soren Metha. Francesca Ann Minio. Nicholas Edward Messina. Nathan Brian Montgomery. Moses Tapajika Moamba. Katrina Yenli Moose. Vanessa Ann Munoz. Christopher Matthew Murphy. James Edward Murray III. Ian Jameson Myers. Jack O'Brien. Faith Ann O'Donnell. Geneva Eowyn O'Hara. Michelle Caroline Ober. Namdi Daniel Obekwi. <laughs> Mia Marie Palumbo. Trevor Michael Parzak. <laughs> Sands Rylan Pascasilla. <laughs> Joseph Ryan Pasica. <laughs> Jay Vipal Patel. Rebecca Miriam Patrizio. Aiden James Pollock. Miguel Andrew Pierce. Francis Newsom Pelfrey. <laughs> K. 
Catherine Elizabeth Penna. Christopher David Penner. Gianna Marie Perricone. Grayson Deferanos Peterson. Alexandra Elizabeth Peronito. Max Jansen Petra. Jackson Joseph Philbin. Jacob Andrew Scott Pinkney. Blake Lynn Petonia. Reese Margaret Petonia. Ari Ramon Polanco. Lily Julia Polizzi. Nathan Alexander Pompano. Daisy Soleil Pope. Eugenia Mansrati Ponzo Breno. Max Xander Rasmussen. Amelia Grace Retet. Alfred Frank Rachi the Fourth. Caroline Ann Riley. Maximus Victor Bryant. David Lewis Riccio the Third. Alexa Monet Ron. Lucia Rose Rasconi. Ali Sabea. Eva Noor Sadek. Gabriella Lynn Sanson. Alexander Jude Santagata. Diana Sarkozy. Camillo Eduardo Selig.
Megan Marie Serpitz. Alexander Mendez Sexton. Roman Edward Shalligan. William Anthony Sheldon. Julian Fade Rich. Paige Ryan. Ava Garmini Singleton. Brennan Michael Sinoway. Olivia Rose Skepchinski. Madeline Joan Smith. Noah Keith Marlin Spielman. Dylan Patrick Stanton. Callum David Stevens. Brent Jeffrey Strand. Miles Alexander Thompson. Michael Lawrence Torrey. Carson J. Tosta. Olivia Catherine Tercio. Talia Louise Tercio. Caitlin Elise Vail. Michael Edward Van Curen. Daniela Diane Vickerman. Lillian Grace Vinsel. Jaden Wadang Violet. Emily Christina Visco. Christian Anthony Visconti. Luke Jameson Weiner. Sarah Christine Walsh. (laughs) 
Aiden John Wang. Isabella Riley Weeks. Isabella Maria Welch. Matthew Stephen Whaley. Daniel Christopher White. Sydney Randall Widlitz. Sydney Denise Witherell. Mitchell Christopher Yagi. Tyler Anthony Zukowski. Caitlin Rose Zapson. Thomas Michael Ziemba. Jorge Eduardo Zuniga. At this time, would the faculty please stand and be recognized? Taking up your space.